dust off the old Adding Mystery deck, but I didn't make the same changes that you did. I, I didn't put in a lot of those uh, changes we made. I literally just used my exact same list, but tweaked huh. the hand traps a little to not lose to Drytron. Like, I threw in a couple Droll and Mockbirds. Yeah. And uh, this was the, uh, the first game back in Platinum, where I, I was like, okay, I, I got out of gold, we're back in Platinum, let's see what happens. I got to go second. And I opened double kaiju in perm. I'm feeling good. Reasoning. What do we call when we see reasoning? One. Why? Because if it's Decatron, we lose by not calling game. one. And if it's any other card in the game, we don't care. <laughs> so, and look, it's a max C. Nice reasoning, man. And Banishment of the Dark Lords. And I was like, okay, is this some kind of like deep draw deck? Or am I unironically playing against Dark Lords? And... I am unironically playing against Dark Lords. The only thing I know about this deck is that Anthony Cadigan played it for a little while, and it's 18 copies of every card in your deck, because every monster copies every spell and trap out of the graveyard. I like the Dark Lords. I think they're a really cool deck to play. I mean, again, the problem I've got with it is it's just as expensive to build this deck as it is yes. to build any other competitive deck in Master Duel, and I think that's a problem that they need to find a way of addressing a bit better. The Secret Packs help, but... Hmm. It's still too expensive to craft at XE, extra sorry extra deck specific monsters that apply to a theme that are like ultra mm. rare. So I hadn't seen this one before. I think it's relatively new, but I misread it. Uh, I thought it said take two Dark Lords uh, and oh, yeah, this summon the problem. Yeah, summon one to your hand and one to your and put one put one in your hand and summon one to your field is what I thought it said. And no, no, he gave me this useless piece of junk that just said I'm not allowed to use Imperm for the rest of my turn. Yeah, and it's uh, a huge problem against uh, the Ag Mister deck. Yeah. I run into this. Yeah, I, I we call that the whoopsie card. But uh, here's Condemned Dark Lord, discard an Ash, which I was thankful to see go away. But that means he probably has another one, and then summons down his Dark Lord Morning Star, which says cannot be targeted. And this was the duel that taught me something that I embarrassingly did not know, which is that Access Code Talker doesn't target. Uh, didn't know that, if I'm honest. It never came up. I just assumed because they couldn't chain to it. Every time I ac activated them, it highlighted every card on their field. And I was like, that's nice. Pick this one, kill it. Did not know yeah. that it was targeting. It wasn't targeting, rather. I just assumed that it was and that they weren't allowed to chain to it. <laughs> like, when you activate it, when you activate a card and you have to target something, you, you pick the thing and then it asks them. And in, in the case of access code, it was never asking, but it also never could so I, I never noticed that he didn't target in my entire life but uh this guy's saying while well, you control a dark lord monster he can't be targeted and then highlighting like a christmas tree when i activate access code talker's effect was just lovely so uh gains a bunch of life points ends his turn yeah, that's also another problem against your deck uh this deck is that they gain life so it makes the otk a little bit more yes awkward yes uh, Dark Lords are great. Super Poly and Indulge is just a free first. You know what? I, I agree, Mercy Pillow. That's fantastic. So, uh, <laughs> like, he, yeah, he, the problem uh, you've got to look at, uh, I just saw in the chat that you get the free monster. Yeah. You can't clear your main monster zone. You have to have a uh, security dragon in your extra deck to get it off of the, the yes. field. Now, uh, looking at this, Max C does nothing, obviously. Yep. This card is doing nothing. This card has no quick effects or anything I care about. This card is doing nothing. This guy is ultimately doing nothing. Uh, he's untargetable and does like all kinds of like fancy boss monstery things, but he's doing nothing. And then this guy and this guy have the same effect, which is I'm over 2,500 and I can activate one of these things. So I have to read the guy's graveyard and go, okay, this thing is a fusion spell and this thing is a negate. And they shuffle back into the deck. So... The first time this gets used, it's gone. He's got two of them. The second one would be the fusion summon. I don't want him to fusion summon. That seems like a bad time to me. So the first thing I do, I go and get red. And I just normal summon him. And I'm like, okay, use your negate. And he does. And what this means is these guys are both once per turn. This card has now joined the league of I'm doing nothing. I only have to worry about Amdusk. So now I know exactly what card to use my Kaiju on. So yeah, Nastin will gain 800 life and negate my Achichi, and Gadarla will sit on Amdusk. And from here, 
I think maybe he has the ash, and he doesn't. He discarded his ash, and I was just like, okay, cool. I will yeah. just proceed to play Yu-Gi-Oh now. You're, you have all these cards, and none of them do anything. But all of my cards do something. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not going to be able to OTK him. Key. But I am going to make sure that he's limping into an impermanence, is the current goal here. Yeah. I mean, that's something else against Agnes. Just, um the initial build that I was playing struggle against. If your opponent put like four monsters down, it became then quite awkward to. Yeah. You, you never want to banish your own trans, uh, update uh, jammer yeah. in the graveyard. You can, if they have four monsters, go through the uh, trans code talker for no reason. Yeah. When you have, when you have a splash and update, you can go into trans code, bring back the update, and then go into access code, and the trans code will be an earth banish. You do have the ability to get a fourth one. You, you can do it. It's just like. The thing, I don't really like doing it because it puts you at a slight disadvantage. Yeah, it takes away your ability to play through Nibiru, for starters. But, uh, yeah, this is just me going through the motions. I wanted to use Doyon's effect, so I Synchro Summoned, because Splash Mage negates what it brings back, but uh, Buruu does not. Doyon get back my spells for follow-up plays. And make my friend. And I was like, okay, I've got two attacks, so I'll just make one attack over the Morning Star and one attack over the Condemned Dark Lord and use my pops on the other three and get as much damage in as I can because I can't target his Morning Star. Was my thoughts at the time. It wasn't until right here when Morning Star lit up that I was like, oh, well, that's cool. So I got rid of like the other big things and I was just like, oh, I can pop Morning Star. So, so I did. Uh, and that meant I could get a direct attack off instead, so bam, and kablamo. Yeah, opponents on one card playing through and burn. Yeah, the security dragon giving me a fourth pop was a nice touch. I, I appreciated yeah. him giving me that Dark Lord Uka back as much as it was going to hurt. And and I set an imperm, and I'm like, okay, this guy's got 2300. Next turn, I just have to kill him. He sets a card across from my fighting spirit, which to me says this must be infinite impermanence. So I just try and see it. Show me the Imperm, and I'll target that. And it turns out that it's like, pop my monster, which is fine, because he's got 2300, which is like the most familiar looking number in the world to any Ignister player. Yeah, and I just beat them with a win. <laughs> so, <laughs> it just kind of worked out really well for me. Was there a reason why everything was 2300 uh, from Agnes? I didn't watch the end of the Rain series. Maybe there's somebody in the chat that's... Uh...